Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. Um, I want to just remind you that this week during Holy Week, we have special services on Monday, Thursday, a traditional one here in the sanctuary at seven. And Scott will make an announcement about a family service. And um, at noon on Good Friday, we have a service here. And I'm going to remind you also, if you've been doing Lenten bags, as we handed out at the beginning of the season, remember to bring them back with the contents that you've collected um, and put them at the Lenten tree next Sunday. Scott? Yeah, just uh, as uh, Colleen mentioned, that uh, we do have a couple of services throughout Holy Week this week. Uh, at 6 o'clock on Thursday, we have our family foot washing service. This is for families of youth and young children uh, to gather. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's going to be a very spiritual, fulfilled time. If you are planning on attending that event, uh, since it's the first time we're going to be doing this, if you can let me know before you leave today, that way we can make sure we have enough supplies for everybody uh, to attend, or you can register through Realm. Also, if you are planning on going to the Easter egg hunt this Saturday, um, if you have not pre-registered, please do so. If you pre-register, your children will get a free gift from us for doing so. So that is going to be fantastic, but please come out. That's going to be at 9 o'clock on Saturday. And again, the family foot washing event will be 6 o'clock p.m. on Thursday. We stand for the call to worship. Give thanks to God, for God is good. We give thanks to God, who answers us, for God is our saving help. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice Give thanks to God, for God is good. God uh, remain standing. Our opening hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, in your hymnal uh, number 278.
seated. Ooh, that was kind of loud. Sorry.
Some of the children sang at the first service also. So I've had a long morning. Our scripture is from the prophet Isaiah in the 50th chapter. This is one of the verses which is um, thought to be a, a kind of prophecy of uh, Jesus and Jesus' work. They did a great job. That was a lot of words to learn. And um, one of the reasons I like for that song to be taught is it really tells a lot of the salvation story. So when you have that story in your head, you have a lot of, um, a lot of Bible knowledge. Verse 4 in chapter 50 of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O merciful God, we confess that we have not acknowledged you as the source of our successes, our substance, ourselves. We have been far more ready to complain when things go wrong than to praise when all is well. We have fed our bodies a rich diet while neglecting to feed our souls. Power and wealth have assumed greater importance to us than sensitivity and service. We have allowed religious words and forms to substitute for living, living encounters with the persons you've called us to love. Forgive us, compassionate Redeemer, and grant us the opportunity to start over again. Keep us from repeating the mistakes of the past or from new evils that could mislead or destroy. In the name of Christ, we offer our earnest prayers for pardon and deliverance. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's all say, thanks be to God. Um, I invite you now to take the opportunity to say hello and, and greet uh, folks around you and people you uh, haven't met and people who are familiar faces. <clears throat>
All right. How is everyone? Okay? Good. So what is today? Palm Sunday. That's right. All right. I've got um, three great Easter bunny riddles for you today. Okay? We're a little week early, but it's okay. So, um, so I've got three good ones for you. Here we go. Riddle number one. So if you know the answer, shout it out or raise your hand. If you know the answer, shout it out or raise your hand. All right. Riddle number one. Why did the Easter Bunny wear a hat? You know? Let me help you, okay? Why did the Easter Bunny wear a hat? Anyone? Because he was having a bad hair day. Bad hair day. All right, rule number two. Uh, what does the Easter Bunny do after he takes a shower? Anyone? Am I not here? What does the Easter Bunny do after he takes a shower? He uses a hair dryer. Hair dryer. Okay. <laughs> Last one. What is the Easter Bunny's favorite restaurant? Somebody should get this. Yes? Bunnies. Bunnies, that's a good guess. I hop. I hop. Very good. Excellent. Okay. All right. So everyone's good today, right? Yep, good. All right. So today's a special day. It's Palm Sunday, right? Palm Sunday begins the week that we call Holy Week. And Palm Sunday is named for the day that Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. He was riding a donkey, and crowds lined the entrance of Jerusalem and weighed palm branches at him to welcome him. Okay? Um, they had heard about Jesus, and some of them probably had heard him preach and maybe even seen him perform miracles. But their love for him would soon change. Those that feared Jesus convinced the government that his preachings were dangerous against the Jewish laws and that he proclaimed he was the Messiah, the Son of God. They didn't believe that. He was put on trial, and within a few days, he would be put to death, crucified on the cross. So next week, we're going to celebrate the miracle that happened three days after Jesus died. Okay? All right? That's Easter Sunday. So make sure you come back, and we'll hear the rest of the story next week about Jesus' um, resurrection, Easter. Okay, we're going to sing a song. So in your bulletin is a little insert. It has the words to the song. And what do we always sing our song to? Twinkle, twinkle. Very good. All right, so we'll see if it works. Dixie's going to help us out. You ready, Dixie? Yes. Okay. Into the city Jesus came, the people cheered and called his name. But they'd betray the Son of Man, salvation was God's perfect plan. Into the city Jesus came, people cheered and called his name. All right, very good. Okay, let's say a prayer together. You ready? Okay. Dear God, we thank you for sending your son to show us just how much you love us. Amen. All right. So you, before you go, you guys are God's little peeps. You know what peeps are? Peeps are like people, and you're God's little peeps. So I have for each of you, yeah. So I've got for each of you a peep. So here you go. Are you ready? You know what a peep is? Oh, you'll find out. In this little bag, it's a little marshmallow treat. Okay? It's a peep. Because you're a peep. All right, there you go. Thank you. Kyle, can you... Uh lower the screen and get the offering things ready. Uh, did you get the picture of the baby?
Uh, while that's happening, I wanted to just share, so grateful for the 28 people, including children, who came yesterday to help clean up the church. Uh, we got some great things done down in Fellowship Hall and outside and just multiple spots, the kitchen, and it was much appreciated. Uh, I was hoping I might be able to show a slide. We have our newest member of the church family was born this week, uh, baby Arthur, to Peter and Marlene Northcutt um, a few days ago. There we go. So uh, obviously they're not here yet, but wanted to share that with you. And they said they're looking forward to bringing Arthur uh, when, they, when they can. I also had uh, good news that yesterday I got the first pledge that came in from a child under 10 years old. And uh, for church cleanup day, he noticed the pledge cards out and asked about them and very proudly brought up, he said, I can make a pledge to the church this year. So I thought, wow, that's great. We uh, will do our offering as we come forward um, for communion. And uh, it's just there in the center if you are bringing it rather than giving online. I wanted to let you know that one of the reasons we're really, really working on getting the church um, ready to handle uh, events is that the bishop is bringing an event here in uh, three weeks on a Thursday, I think the 27th. Um, that's more than three weeks a month. Uh, that is going to be for all of the churches that are involved in some kind of ministries with uh, persons post-incarceration. And um, we are just delighted to be able to host that event and look forward to having uh, more events that we host here, including outreach for the community. Palm Sunday starts out... Um, now I'm going to the sermon, Kyle. Palm Sunday starts out as a wonderful day at a parade where Jesus actually consciously enters into Jerusalem as a king. Probably the, the closest equivalent that we could come to uh, thinking about what Jerusalem was like today would be if we, if we kind of combined Washington, D.C. with the Vatican City. We would have a center of religious and political power uh, in Jerusalem. Jesus has done most of his ministry in the outlying areas, and when he turns his face to go to Jerusalem, where he knows already there's some opposition awaiting him, he begins and goes on a donkey now, most of the time, Jesus walked around. But he was consciously imitating Solomon, who when he went from being Prince Solomon to King Solomon, entered into the city on a donkey. And Jesus asked his disciples to go find him a donkey so that he could make a statement about entering as a king. And there were people who acknowledged his kingship with joy. People got it right. They cried out, Hosanna, which in its root means save us, but had by that time perhaps just come to be a term of praise. But the root, save us, is, is implied in Hosanna. And I wonder, just I'm going to, going to pose this to you as an I wonder, if you were really going to say, say Hosanna, save us, with the utmost of your being, what would you be asking for salvation from? If I were to ask you, save us from what? What would you put down? The people wanted someone who could make things right in their world. And from what they'd seen and heard of Jesus, they believed he might be the one. I have, uh, it's often uh, the cu custom on Passion Sunday, which Palm Sunday is also Passion Sunday, that we have people read the whole Passion narrative because there's so many uh, important things that happen 
during the last week of Jesus' life, things that symbolized fully who he was as God's beloved son and as our Lord and Savior. Uh, and we can't capture them all. But Easter is so much more meaningful when we know what happens in between. But because we have such a wonderful visual capacity here, I'm going to do that kind of look through the events of the week through art. So Jesus is welcomed as a king, and I, this, these are contemporary. These are photos from around the world uh, just showing. This is a Palm Sunday celebration in Honduras. Uh, in the little island of Vanuatu, uh, Presbyterian youth celebrate Palm Sunday in a traditional dance. Jesus entered as a king. From that celebration, Jesus went almost immediately to cleansing the temple. What kind of king goes from the height of celebration when you seem like you have the crowd on your side to something that is so tumultuous? What kind of king, rather than going out and identifying external enemies to go after, to get people to rally around you, instead goes for the heart of what separates people from God in worship, corrupted worship practices, overturning the tables of the temple. Jesus was speaking up on behalf of people who didn't have as many means and who got exploited as they came to the worship to temp, uh, at the temple by the money changers. And Jesus was the kind of leader who would actually take that economic base that was close by and stand up for justice, even though it was not going to make him popular. Jesus was anointed during that week. He accepted public extravagant praise from someone who was a woman, a woman perhaps who was not well thought of by others, a woman who was perhaps known as a sinner. Jesus accepted her praise as something that was worthy of attention. This is not like politicians kissing babies. This would be like politicians visiting places that people think no one should go. Jesus shares a final meal with the disciples. Obviously, we have a depiction of that on our altar. I'm going to show you a couple of very different ones, though. In this final meal with the disciples, Jesus lets it be known that he is aware that one of them is going to betray him, one of his inner circle, and one is going to deny that they know him. And yet he has this time of communion with them. What kind of leader trusts people so much who have already shown they may fail? It's a leader who believes in forgiveness, who believes in developing people, and who has perhaps more faith in us than we have in ourselves. Very different image. You can see, you can see the, the haunts uh, of the betrayal and denial that will come soon. One of the uh, most depicted scenes from uh, the ministry of Jesus is Jesus washing his disciples' feet. It's such a vivid lesson that this kind of king, this kind of leader, is all about service, not talking about service, but actually leading by example and asking them to be willing to wash one another's feet and love one another as he's loved them.
Isn't it interesting how different ages paint Jesus as one of their own? Peter's saying, not my feet, Lord, but it kind of looks like Jesus is giving him a high five. (laughs) Jesus prays on Gethsemane and struggles with the will of God. He asks the disciples to be there with him, and they are, but they keep falling asleep. This leader did not use power in order to preserve himself, but submitted his power and authority to the higher authority, the truth of God and his purpose in God's plan. I love this one. You see the depiction here of take this cup away from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. There he seems to even be resisting the comfort of the angels. There's something about a betrayal with a kiss. Someone who is that close, who is that much a part of your inner circle and who would do it in that manner. Jesus is arrested, interrogated, and punished. Punished, Pilate hoped, in such a way that it would assuage the bloodlust of the crowd. There you see the commander washing his hands as Pilate washed his hands. There's someone insisting that they crucify him. Peter denies knowing Jesus three times while he's in that trial. Surely you know that man, don't you? I tell you, I do not know him. Urged by the crowd, Pilate sentences Jesus to death.
Jesus is crucified with two criminals, and as he dies, he's mocked by soldiers, onlookers, and one of the criminals. This last slide is by Lauren Wright Pittman. She's an American author and theologian who's also an artist. And this um, print is called The Choice, and I want to share her words of describing uh, this picture. Jesus offers the crowd, us, a layered and complicated choice, one that is as complex as his own dualistic nature The first option is self-denial, a heavy burden, and a lost but saved life. The second is gaining the whole world but forfeiting life. It's easy for a seasoned Christian to take this choice for granted. This choice that Jesus calls us into may even seem like a no-brainer, but in this moment, Jesus teaches of the terrors that will befall him and invites the crowd to knowingly face that path alongside him. If we're honest, it's extremely difficult to reject the tempting power and wealth this world has to offer and its comforts and allow our life to take the shape of good news for all. The choice isn't an obvious one. One side looks like an opulent pile of riches, a crown, and endless power, while the other looks like tattered and worn hands with new life blooming out of wounds, work, burdens, and relationships. This choice may seem like a distant decision made long ago, but it's a decision to be made every single day, one moment at a time, in working for and with those who have been forgotten, oppressed, orphaned, widowed, poor, in working for God's compassionate kingdom, we might find ourselves I'm grateful for this day when we remember that some people got it. They got that he was the king, and he still is the king, the king of kings, who died as a servant, as one who forgave, as one who believed in birthing the church, the new community of the body of Christ. May it be so. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you will find rest for your souls. Please join with me in the great thanksgiving. It's found in the insert in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When our love failed and we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with all your company of heaven and all the people on earth, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who emptied himself into human form to guide us back to you. Through his teaching and his actions, he demonstrated that the time had come when you would save your people. When he processed into Jerusalem on a colt, the people gathered and cried, Hosanna, save us, because he he lived your salvific love in our midst. And as the enthusiasm of 
Hosanna began to dim in the shadow of plots to crucify him. He did not waver in the love and grace he extended to all. In the night of his final gracious and loving acts, the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these, your gifts of bread and wine, and on us gathered here. Make the gifts be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we who are his people, the one who was rejected and is now the cornerstone of salvation, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, uh, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many become one. This is the cup of salvation and is offered to all who respond by faith in Jesus' words of invitation. I would invite the ushers and helpers to come forward.
Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for feeding us with this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Savior. Thank you for the peace, forgiveness that dwells now in our hearts. We ask that you would send us forth to serve, to serve Jesus as our King and the people for whom Jesus died as our neighbor. We ask it in his name. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Sacred Head Now Wounded, now number 286. May God grant you the faith and the courage to live your life for a high and a holy and a happy purpose. May God grant you friends with whom to share every step of life's journey with its joys, its sorrows, its challenges, and its opportunities. And may God bless you, including being a blessing in this world that God so loves. Amen. In your bulletin, oh how he loves you and me. Jesus. Too.